So your chiller is tripping on a low leaving water temperature alarm. And like, what does that mean? Why, why would it be doing that? Well, it's actually, it's another way of saying that we hit set point or the shutdown set point specifically. Now keep this in mind just as a quick explainer here that in an ideal world, chillers don't shut off. They stay running all the time and they will stay online to maximize their efficiency and then to be, you know, increase reliability because that shut down time and then start back up, recapture the load, that takes a lot of time. So ideally, most of the time, we're going to have a shutdown set point two to four degrees, depending on your chiller, below your actual leaving water set point, your chill water set point. So if we have a chill water set point of 44 degrees, but we got down to 42 degrees on our leaving water, well, that's going to result in a low leaving water temperature shutdown. Uh, and it, that could mean a couple of things. One, the most common I see is a load issue. There's just not a lot of load to begin with. So the chiller ended up shutting off because it just didn't have enough to keep it online. Now, depending on the type of chiller that you have, whether you're dealing with a centrifugal or whether you're dealing with a screw compressor, will vary a little bit more as to what the next conditions could be. And by the way, hi, I'm Holden Schamberger. I'm with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. Do chiller education here. Go check out if you want some professional trainings or go through some chiller certification courses, anything of that nature over at chilleracademy.com. I'd love to work with you. I get you in the community over there, help you out. Now, if we're talking about a centrifugal compressor, uh, there's a few things that could cause us not to be unloading. So one of the things that if it's not a low load problem, then it could be a unloading problem. All right. So let's start off with the centrifugal side, then we'll move into the screws. So we couldn't unload and that could be because of maybe some surge conditions. So keep in mind that as we try to unload our ability to, to stay off of our surge curve, lowers as well, as, meaning that our lift has to reduce on the compressor. And if you don't know what any of these terms or things mean, it's okay. I've got plenty of training out there, whether at Chiller Academy or just here on social media, go through my page. You'll see some of my stuff talking about surge conditions for a centrifugal. But um, we, we, have to, we have a surge curve. We have to stay off of that curve. If we push that curve too far with too high of lift, we push into a surge, a low as we're trying to unload and we're running a lower load condition, which if our leaving water is getting too low, that could be a, a, a symptom of that, um, then that may be us trying not to surge. And because of our, say our condenser water side, say if, if we're running too high of a condenser water for the load that we have and we're not adjusting that down, then it's very likely that we have to keep the compressor staged up higher because uh, we, we don't want to go into a surge condition, which means we can't unload further either. Now, it also could be an IGV issue. It's your inlet guide vane or PRV if you're dealing with a York. So what that will look like is the veins say something broke and they can't close off enough. So the chiller is trying to unload. It can't unload far enough because that vein in there is just messed up or a couple of them or how, whatever the condition may be. Maybe the actuator on, on the guide veins is having a problem. So that's going to also make it to where it's able to overcool the loop. All right. And we can't back off. Now, another condition going back to unloading ability is hot gas bypass. Many times that compressor may be as unloaded as it possibly can be. Like it is all the way down as far as it'll go, but it's still not enough. And that comes back to a low load. There's just not enough load there. And if we don't have a hot gas bypass, which a lot of chillers don't, a lot of centrifugals don't, and that depends on your region. So you may be in a region where that may be more common, but in a lot of areas, it's not that common of a component that uh, in my experience. So without that component, you're you're very limited in just how far you can unload even if you have hot gas bypass it's not it doesn't mean that you're still going to avoid hitting your shutdown temperature okay it just means that you've got a lot more breathing room before you do compared to a chiller that didn't so 
in terms of a centrifugal and it not being able to unload enough as, as a compressor, as a machine, that could be some conditions you could see that would lead to um, not being able to, to unload far enough and then you end up tripping on low leaving water. Now, if you have a screw machine, that could be a slide valve issue. So the slide valve is what controls your load on the compressor. If that slide gets stuck, it can't move back far enough or fa fast enough, far enough. Um, or if you're having an oil issue, there's a number of things that could affect that slide valve. That could be making it to where you're not unloading enough. And because you can't unload the compressor enough, uh, you're overcooling, you're hitting that shutdown set point. Now, you could also be dealing with a, say, a, a minimum speed issue. A lot of our screws now are variable speed. They can only go un uh, unload so far. And there's, it's not as simple as just having a minimum hertz. We also have to make sure we maintain a minimum deferential pressure for oil si uh, flow through the compressor. That's how screws cycle their oil through them. They don't have an oil pump like a centrifugal. So we have to make sure that we are maintaining a minimum deferential pressure, but we also try to lower our uh, compressor speed as much as possible. So because of those boundaries, we just may not be able to go far enough with the load that we have. Again, not being able to unload enough would be another symptom of possibly just a low load condition overall. It doesn't guarantee that though. So I, I, I do want to throw that in there. Just because you're having a low leaving water doesn't mean that you have a low load. And that's why I say that it could be a condition where the compressor stages up okay, but something is happening where it doesn't stage back down correctly. And even with a load on the machine, it could still end up overcooling and hitting a low, low leaving water uh, shutdown you know, temperature. So, the final thing for unloading, you can have a hot gas bypass with a screw compressor, just like you would a centrifugal. And it works off the exact same principles. Okay, so once we hit a minimum point with our compressor, we're, we try to engage the hot gas bypass, which has got a pressure regulator that, that by, literally bypasses the condenser pressure into the section side. So it, we're, we're skipping the... the um, this discharge, I say condenser pressure, it's discharge pressure uh, to the suction or to the evaporator. That way we can artificially raise the evaporator pressure and help us kind of create a false load, right? That's what hot gas bypass is doing. So if your machine doesn't have that or if that's not working, um, that could also be part of your issue as to why you're seeing that. Now, a few more generalized things. It could be a water flow issue. So if you've got low water flow through your evaporator barrel, that's going to make it more likely for you to trip on a low leaving water temperature. If you have a small loop, so loop the chill water loops have to have a minimum GPM value. I'm not, not I'm sorry, not GPM, gallons, like the total physical amount of water in the loop. And if depending on how big your your load in your chiller are that that decides how many gallons you're going to need in order to maintain consistent flow and most of the time chill water should have a three to five minute cycle time closer to five minutes is what I've, i understand to be more recommended so if we're able to cycle the water through the loop say one molecule of it faster than that then the chances are we've got too little volume that creates a very reactive cycle. So every little change is very dramatic in a small loop like that. And this is why we use buffer tanks and things. Either way, you may not have enough water in the loop. And it may not be that like that is it's not a lack of water pressure. Okay, your water pressure may be fine. It is the literal gallons that the loop is capable of holding is not enough. So just something to consider. That's going to be something, though, that i say a newer system. I, I would be surprised it happens, but I would be surprised if a existing or older system is going to run into that as often versus it's a relatively new-ish install and they've had these load issues and just nobody's pinpointed the fact that, 
hey, uh, loop's too small. Anyway, uh, a sudden drop in load would be probably the final thing I would recommend paying attention to. So if our load going through the chiller just suddenly nosedives, so, so let's say there's a manufacturing run happening and that run finishes, we no longer have the load coming into the machine and those isolation valves to that equipment start to close off that can create a very rapid reduction in entering water temperature because typically with a system like that you're going to go into a bypass state of some kind in order to maintain flow through the loop so if you're having load just suddenly drop off the loop if it happens in just the right way or just the right amount it could cause a low leaving water condition that happens on the water side faster than the compressor can react to it. So the chiller may not be able to adjust itself fast enough to catch a sudden dip in that water or the entering water temperature, the load across the, uh, the evaporator. So yeah, if you're dealing with this alarm or this condition in any way, just be aware it's basically hitting set point. So the, the difference with chillers is we don't want to hit like shut down set point. That's not our target nor our objective. We want to hit our, our leaving water set point, which is something that we can stay at and then just glide right there and stay online as much and as long as possible. We do not want a condition where we're constantly off on, off on with our compressors or anything else like that. That's not, that's not conducive inside of the, the, the way the chillers are designed. These aren't, split systems like you'd have on a house where that's expected. Uh, ho hopefully that helps that make a little more sense or um, you know, it's more relatable to understanding. I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is CSG, Compressor Solutions Group, based out of Houston, Texas. They've also got a shop in DFW serving the Texas area, and they also can provide you compressor service nationally. They're a great group of guys. They've done a really good job with just getting their information out there. They try to really invest into training in this industry and just supporting the contractors. Reach out to Jake with any questions you have. He'll be able to take care of you, be able to help you out. They do full service and rebuilds on screw compressors and semi-hermetic recips. They've been a great friend of the channel. They've been a great friend of mine. I look forward to working with them for a long time to come. Go check out Chiller Academy. Love to work with you over there and help you out in any way I can. Get your Chiller certification if you're interested in doing that. With that MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. This is a really demanding industry. The work we do is critical, and we are a critical part of the infrastructure for our, our nations. And so just bear that in mind. But we can't, you know, I thought of a thing recently. We can replace our job most of the time. Now, we may not always be able to replace it with a job we want, but we can replace our job in the end. But in my opinion, we cannot replace our family. Okay? It's just that's something you just you can't replace your family. So take that seriously, please. Either way, MTT, make the time. I'll see you later.